my name is Don. Thank you very much for looking in. As our, this video is on the similar lines of the one I did previously, where I, I mention about man ruining the earth and is responsible for the freak weather that we're having. You know, man is he's ruining the earth at an unprecedented rate and the, God did, does say in Revelation 11, 18 he will ruin those bring to ruin those ruining the earth and at the moment man is you know, pruning the, the sea cutting down trees uh, polluting the air with CO2s exhausts from cars and you name it, chemical spills and plastic, nuclear weapons, all these are damaging the atmosphere and polluting the earth. And man is 99% responsible, I believe, for all the freak weather that we're having. You know, we call it uh, increasing floods. And we, England has, ex uh, has it been experiencing floods from, uh, I think, a tropical Lamberto has just uh, hit the UK not so long ago and it's caused so much flooding in Oxford and Manchester and other towns of UK. Some places have seen so much flooding and a few hours about a month worth of rain in a few hours and, and again India has seen unprecedented rain in the monsoons even worse than usual and wildfires only yesterday in Bolivia firefighters are battling loads of wildfires in Bolivia that the worst in two decades we can't blame God for all these natural disasters, these freak disasters. Man is 99% responsible uh, because of all the pollution and the chemicals and CO2s and everything. He's, he's damaged the balance, as I said before, of nature. God put a balance. Because it's not balanced, we have a freak weather. And uh, it's like, it's like uh, what do you call it, the earth is fighting back. It's like a wild animal. You corner it, you want to try to kill it, it will fight back. The same way God has made the balance, this earth is living. Everything that God created is alive. It's f you can see it's living because it's producing crops and you know, fertile land. One well, say it, the earth is alive and it's fighting back because the, of the balance. You're trying to destroy the earth, it's fighting back. But we cannot blame God for these natural disasters. 99% of it is caused by man and damaging earth and pollution because the, the balance is not. But as I've said in the previous one, God, the first time God he does use nature God does use nature in 2nd Peter 3 5 to 7 I, I read it last video last time he destroyed wicked mankind in a flood see he used nature last time in a flood but this time he's going to use fire to, to cleanse mankind of the wicked people you know and as you can see, Earth is already starting to heat up globally because God's burning anger is, is coming soon. This is a sign, the heating up. This is the beginning. This is very soon, God's, this is a sign that God's burning anger is coming because he will use fire this time. Let me read you some scriptures to show that, that he will use fire this time. 
2 Peter 3.20 But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a war, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Let me explain. When he says he's going to burn up the heavens and the earth, it, not literally what he means is remove the wickedness, wicked people or wicked angels from heaven and the wicked people on earth, cleansing it. Second Peter 3.17 But the same words, the heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. For Malachi 4, 2, For behold, a day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be stubble. The day is coming, shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. Uh, it means either God's anger, burning anger, or he literally will destroy them in fire, or destroy the ungodly from the earth. Second Peter 2.22 Waiting for the hastening, the, the coming of the day of the God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will, be, will melt as they burn. This is Revelation 2, uh, 21, 1-27 Then I saw a new heavens and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, uh, preparing as a bride adorned from, for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. I will leave it at that. It says, A new heaven, a new earth, earth has passed away. As I said, the wicked people have been removed. Luke, it says here in Hebrews twelve twenty nine, for our God is a consuming fire. And then goes here. Zephaniah three eight. Therefore wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day for the day when I rise up to seize the prey, for my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignation, all my burning anger, for in the fire of my jealousy all the earth shall be consumed. I'll read one last one, Second Peter three ten to twelve. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the heat and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you be in the lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? Because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn obviously and all the wickedness will be burned on earth also so as it says shouldn't we if he says what sort of people ought we be holy and godly you know waiting for the coming of the day of the lord so as you can see by the scriptures, this time God will definitely use fire as he said he would to destroy, wipe out all wicked people on the earth and only leave the righteous ones. And uh, what do you call it? I, and you can see worldwide it, the sign that God's coming is that the, the, the whole world the, the, is globally warming up. That, I believe, is a sign that God's burning anger is starting to come soon. I, I believe, like a few others, that Niburu will be used by God 
and world leaders like Russia, America and have kept it hush and astronomers know that Nibiru, God's weapon of judgment, has been coming through uh, the solar system towards this way. It's Nibiru is one planet of seven around a second sun, Nemesis. And can you imagine you can imagine why Earth is going to burn up soon because it's been travelling they the Astronomers have already known about it for at least, I would say, 30 years, and it's very, it's, it's nearing, it's already near the sun. Once it comes this side of the sun, you can imagine two, two solar systems in the same vicinity, two suns, that's why the sun, two suns, obviously that's why the earth will burn up. You know, and is will burn up even more. And as the God, as it says in Revelation, has set seven years of judgment on Earth, and I believe Nibiru will be causing some of the the judgments. Uh, for instance, uh, Revelation 16, verse 8, and the fourth one angel poured out his bowl upon the sun. And to the sun it was granted to scorch the men with fire, and the men were scorched with great heat. You see, in other words, he will use, and the earth will be scorched. It says he will, angel will pour a ball upon the sun, and the sun will be granted to scorch the men with fire, and the earth, and the men were scorched with great heat, but because they had. But they blasphemed the name, name of God and, and has the authority over these so who has the authority over these plagues and they did not repent as to give glory to him. These are the wicked people. So he's going to use Nibiru etc. to this is one of the plagues that Nibiru will cause scorching of the earth. As he said he's going to burn the earth so there's a difference, don't get me wrong, there is a difference between a natural disasters which are indiscriminate and kill anybody and I believe that man has caused 99% uh, of this freak weather because of the pollution but God promises or prophes predicts, uh, he, he's prophesied, he's given a prophecy to John in Revelation that it will use nature in the last seven years to destroy the wicked mankind on the earth. The seven, last seven year judgment. We're living in the last days. So don't get me wrong. Like I said, natural disasters are indiscriminate, but God will use nature in the last seven year judgment. He will use nature, and He has used nature. The difference is with God's. He gives them a warning and he, he gives the righteous people escape where natural disasters there's no escape for good and bad people so one God will give the differences he will give them a warning first and escape and he has given us a warning in Revelation in the Bible the last book 2,000 years ago he gave John a prophecy that in the last days before God's kingdom will be set up after removing the wicked kingdoms of the earth and governments it will be seven years and most of them he will use nature and the or whatever to, to, to wipe out the wicked on the earth so he's given us warnings 2000 years warning but also he's given the righteous escape all those that repent in Jesus name and turn to God's and turn their lives around and obey God he will promise to protect them for instance he used nature do you remember in the book of Genesis in the time of Noah he said that he would destroy the wicked of the those the wicked people on the earth and the giants before the floods so he gave them he told Moses to give them a warning 
Moses preached, sorry, it, it, sorry, I'm getting confused, is Noah. He told Noah, he gave, he told Noah to preach to the people, to give them a warning. You see, there's, God gives people a warning before he does some, a disaster of, of that, that magnitude, he's going to flood the earth. He, he preached for 120 years and no one listens, but he made an escape for Noah and the ark with his family. And it, you know, in the same way, Lot, um, he, he, he warned Lot uh, to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. He was, because of the wickedness and, you know, practicing sodomy, he gave the, a Lot a warning and he, Lot tried his best to tell them, you know, but they didn't want to know. But he gave them a lot an escape after destroying Sodom and Gomorrah by fire. I believe he used nature, a, a volcano, because it, it was seen burning at a distance. Unfortunately, Lot's wife looked and she was turned into a pillar of salt. But uh, Noah escaped and, and uh, Lot escaped. Each time God used nature, fire and water from See, God can use nature. Uh, and some other examples. Other examples where God uses nature, because, you know, it's up to God to use nature, and he will use nature against wicked mankind, is uh, the story of, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Joseph. There the Pharaoh said, I dreamt. He had a dream. He said, and he told Joseph, he said, I, I, I dreamt, I stood on the banks of the river Nile when seven cows, sleek and fattened, emerged from the waters to graze among the reeds. But the seven fat cows were pursued by seven thin cows, ugly, wasted and ulcerous. They ate the seven fat cows, but looked no better, for, it, for it, they looked as diseased as they were before. I dreamt of... Then he dreamt of seven healthy ears of corn, withered and strangled by its seven blighted ears of corn, scorched by the wind. And he, he said, I'm troubled, troubled, Joseph. He said he consulted the magicians and the wise men, but they couldn't help him to interpret the dream. But you know, he told, he told Joseph and he interpreted it with God's help. And guess what he said? Famine is on the way. Egypt will die unless you act quickly. The cows and corn mean you mean the same thing. Seven years of abundant harvests will come, but they will be followed by seven years of drought, pestilence, and blight. The famine that follows will destroy Egypt. You see, God can use nature. He says seven years of drought, pestilence, and blight would be followed by seven years of abundance then first seven years of abundance and then seven years of drought pestilence and blight you see God can use that on he can use nature just like also Moses uh, the time of Moses do you remember the ten plagues he used nature is it after the so it all started the ten plagues all came on Egypt. He, he wanted Egypt, uh, the Egyptian pharaoh, to let his people go because they were in slavery, the Israelites. Uh, Egyptian pharaoh refused, so God told Moses, gave him a staff, uh, and uh, he told him, uh, God used Moses to ten, 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 send ten plagues upon the nation of Egypt until they let his people go. And he, he used nature. For instance, the river turned to blood. That's the first plague. And the river Nile was the lifeline of Egyptian people. But then also there was a plague of frogs. And then there was a plague of gnats. A plague of flies. You see, God can use animals too because he created them. Followed by a plague of life. A plague of a plague of on the livestock that is uh, disease 
and followed by a plague of boils on the skin, infection of the people. So you know God can use pestilence, he can use animals and he can use nature. But also let me see, oh there was also a plague of hailstones. A plague of hailstones that destroyed the crops all the way all over Egypt. You know, etc. So you see God can use nature and even Elijah when uh, what do you call it? You see, they, they were fighting, what do you call it? Now another time that God used nature is the time of Elijah when bringing a message to Ahab. He had been, he turned bad. He was a bad king of Israel. And, and Elijah said, I will bring you, I'll bring you a message from God. From this day onwards, there will be no rain in the land unless I, Elijah, say so. The country will die of thirst unless you renounce evil and turn back to God. And there was no rain for many, many years. And you know, says basically, Elijah said, if it, if you talking to Ahab, if it, if you had turned to God and followed His commandments, then none of this would have happened. You know, droughts, suffered droughts, and no rain for many years. Instead, you followed false idols made, man-made gods of wood and stone. And basically there was, uh, it said, there can only be one true God. Let, let's prove it, Elijah said, uh, to the priests of Ahab who pray to worship Baal. So you pray to Baal, you know, to the false gods, statue of Baal. And, and Elijah prayed to his God and whoever would make it fire from heaven fire from heaven come down to earth then would, uh, would be the true God basically there were 400 prophets of Baal together with the 400 prophets of Ashtaroth started to pray to their gods and they all pleaded and everything and beseeched their false gods and nothing was heard but even though Elijah drenched the altar with water God answered by sending fire down to earth and it burnt the altar and the offering to God so God can use nature any time he wants as I said he warns people first and he's warning you and me now in Revelation the seven year tribulation is coming very soon. He's given us a lot of warning. And I, I'm warning you now that we're living in that time of the end. Seven years of tribulation where God will use nature to remove wicked mankind. But there is a way out, uh, an escape for righteous people. As the Bible does show, there's a great crowd that comes out of the tribulation that escape it. And how these are the ones that have put, turned their lives around, repent. Uh, if, they ha if you haven't come to know Christ, come to know him and repent of your wicked ways. In other words, uh, whatever you've done, turn your life around and lead a good life. Obey God's commandments and put your faith in Christ and repent. And you will escape what's coming on the earth. So I hope you enjoyed that video and thank you very much. Bye.